On Capitol Hill, 45 House Democrats are calling for the Interior Department and the Coast Guard to investigate the grounding of a shell drilling rig in Alaska. After days of stormy weather, the first salvage crew finally reached the Kulak near Kodiak Island on Thursday. They found the vessel is not leaking any fuel. Meanwhile, senior correspondent John Miller says a criminal investigation is looking into another shell drilling ship in the Arctic. John, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Focus now. <laughs> all right, hold on. All right, we're going to get ourselves back together here. Uh, so we've been all, we've all been watching this this rig that's aground um, in the Arctic, but you're, you're telling us there's there's something else going on right around the corner here with essentially what's a sister ship? That's right, and that is the the noble discoverer, which is a shell that the what, the thing that's on the rocks is a drilling platform. It has to be towed around. This is a 572 foot ship that goes out into the Arctic Sea and other places and does drilling for oil. Now this ship limped in to uh, Seward, Alaska with propulsion problems back in late November, Coast Guard Marine Safety Inspectors boarded to do what essentially is a routine inspection, what's the problem with the ship and so on, and they found more than a dozen non-conformities both in the ship's safety management system and pollution control systems. And now Noble, the ship's owner that is is contracted by Shell to do this exploration, uh, says their internal investigation has found some of those issues too. So it raises a real question here. Well, and environmental groups have been very critical of Shell's ability to operate in the Arctic. So what do these two cases tell us and, and are there some real environmental concerns? Well, certainly environmental groups say that these two cases are the worst examples of the sum of their fears, which is you know, there's the pristine waters of the Arctic, there's things like the BP Gulf disaster a couple of years ago and the environmental impact, and they're saying, is this fleet really ready for that kind of exploration? Are these the first problems for, for this ship? And, and, and is this, why has this reached the level of a criminal investigation? Okay, well, that right there is the ground zero of this story, because all kinds of ships may have nonconformities or violations. When the marine inspectors called in the criminal investigators, that means one of two things. Either the violations they found, and this is the part they're not talking about, which is what were those concerns, were so serious that they could lead to criminal action, or they felt that the ship's crew and officers, when questioned, were lying to them. And when the criminal investigators arrived on the scene, uh, most of these people had lawyers provided by the company and were no longer talking. I just want to touch on that safety record. If you go back to their other inspections, in May of 2012, in inspectors found 23 deficiencies. In July, uh, the ship drifted toward shore and nearly ran aground. In September of 2012, um, enforcement actions on an acknowledged pollution source. So again, what we're seeing is, from the environmentalist standpoint, a pattern of actions that really concern them. John Miller, good to see you this morning.